Hi, welcome to Mineral Friday, episode 88, February 8, 2019. Azure Functions, Home Screen, and Scaling. Hi, in this episode I'd like to talk about um, hosting and scaling of Azure Functions. Um, and also I'd like to discuss some of the community content that's available around um, scaling and Azure Functions in general. So Azure Functions basically offers two ways of hosting your functions in Azure. So basically you, you can reserve some compute either through dedicated or dynamic tiers. So either you do this app service plan where you can have tiers like basic, standard, premium, um, isolated. Um, you pay basically on the, the res amount of resources you reserve for virtual machines. And then basically you are responsible for scale. Then the other way of instead of reserving some of the resources that Azure provides for you, you can also um, have a dynamic plan. So you pay on the number of executions and the platform will scale it for you. So you basically you read some of this stuff on the, um, the documentation um, online at Microsoft. So you find the URL on, on the bottom. So you have a little bit of an overview of those hosting uh, capabilities um, for functions. So you can either do this dynamic consumption based, so you only pay for the time that your code you know, runs. So and that's based on, on the amount of compute you consume. Um, that's and they have this um, and they, they express this by uh, gigabytes per second. So they keep the amount of memory executed time of of your um, function app settings. Or at least not function app what I mean is by app service plan. I mean you know the function app settings you mean um, leverage the memory size that you actually want. Then you have the app service plan. So you run them on dedicated VMs based on, on some of the tiers available, uh, which I already mentioned, basic, standard, premium, and isolated. And you know, the service plan is similar to if you just um, use app service themselves to host uh, websites or APIs, etc. Um, but these VMs you allocate in your service plan are dedicated to your function app, which is a container for one or multiple uh, functions. And the thing is that your functions will always be running. So there's no cold start kind of issue. It will always run. And the other thing is you have support for Linux. So it's something you may not have in your consumption plan. Um, you know, if you have an app service plan in place and you want to leverage some of the underutilized resources, then you know this could be an option uh, to uh, for your function as well. If you require more compute power than your consumption plan um, could offer, then it could be an option, and you know you could benefit from it. When you require VNet support or an app service environment support or larger VMs, then again an app service plan is better suited. And again, if you want to run your code continuously, then an app service plan is better suited for. Like the other end, you have your consumption plan. So again, your hosts are basically dynamically added or removed based on some of the income you get. So I'll show that in a demo in a minute. And the other thing is your consumption plan is like, okay, your, your functions should really be stable because they can only run really shortly. Um, you can't have them running too much or too long. The default is about five minutes if it's stable here. And, and you can have it up to 10 minutes by changing the property on your host JSON file. So, Benefits here, you only pay as you go. So this is you know, more the service type of option, if you would say that, because you've got the order scale, the utility use, etc. cetera, um, instead of having more like static resources for your, um, your functions. So what I like to demo in this case is um, that I'm pushing a lot of workloads towards um, a service-based topic that has sub multiple subscription, and each subscription is tied to one function, and that and a host is hosted in a, in, a, in a dynamic plan, so in a consumption plan, and in the function app that hosts those functions. And it, what it will do is will, those functions will get the, um, are, are triggered by the fact that there's a message entering the subscription, pick it up and push it into Cosmos DB. I'm just using the trigger, um, which is, you know, a message arrives from the subscription, and then the binding is for the service bus and also for the, um, the Cosmos DB. So I will run a, application on-premise that just generates a lot of workloads, kind of a load gen thing, and we'll push those messages to the topic based on random number index cases that, you know, it will push the message to 0, 1, 2, 3, so those kind of the um, uh, subscriptions um, inside that topic. So 
this is how the function looks like. The feature exam is that way. And let me kick off the live metrics. So it will connect live metrics to my function app, um, which I tied to, um, to this application inside instance. And what you will see is that there are some incoming requests. Here you see the sample telemetry. Um, the interesting part here too, if you look at the bottom, is that there are multiple servers already uh, enabled to um, catch that load. So it's already dynamically scaled out. If, you, if, you, you, if your workload would be less, you would probably would see only maybe one server, um, but already pushing a lot of the workloads, and you see there are multiple servers being set up and help me push or at least process all those incoming requests. As you can see, the incoming requests are around 500 per second, so that's pretty high. And it scales up automatically, I haven't done anything, and it pushes all those messages um, into um, Cosmos DB. So it's being clicked up one end, as you can see in this function app, and it's being pushed out using the Cosmos DB binary to the Cosmos DB instance. So, Function apps can really scale well on a consumption plan. It can get no messages in this case from um, a serverless topic. There's no issues there. And the other way, and the other thing I like to mention that I also, um, you know, in the Cosmos DB instance, so I'll just switch over to that, um, set the throughput correctly, so that's 10,000, so it can really get some of the workload. If, um, if I would set this too low, then I would get 429s and some of the throttling issues. So not on the function uh, uh, function side or the function app, but more on the Cosmos DB side. But as you can see, you know uh, the um, consumption plan here in, pro in, in in progress. You know it's really able to um, consume that load and push that into the Cosmos DB instance. And I think by now, yeah, it's done. So it took about 90 seconds to get about 10,000 messages. I'm sending from one ki uh, kilobyte messages towards that topic, and that's been pushed into Cosmos DB. And as you can see. You know, those servers are being scaled up and slowly as the workload um, decreases, those servers will be decommissioned and will um, ramp down again. So, with this demo, I'd like to, I wanted to show you, you know, how a consumption plan would behave if you really push a workload of documents towards um, a topic in this case, and then you have those functions listening and consuming all those messages and process them, and you can see how this auto scaling basically works. So there's some community content I like to um, make you aware of as well. So this is a guy called David Barkle who wrote some some interesting posts in the past too about um, several Azure services, including EventGrid, but also about functions. And he wrote something about, oh, okay, how can you scale your functions to really consume a lot of requests from public API, weather.com, and get that into, um, or at least consume that into your Azure platform in really just a few minutes. It says here on a few minutes. So that's an interesting post. Talks about scaling and performance of functions as well. The other thing I like to mention, so what I talked about in this episode is something that you can also find on the um, service notes. So this is an initiative by uh, Service360, or you could say, um, from the flagship Bistro 360, um, that's kind of a new website. It's called uh, servicenotes.com. So you can go there and you'll find tips on, or you know, service tips on logic apps functions. And soon there will also be tips around the service bus event types and event gifts. So, you know, tips like what I'm showcasing here around um, hosting and scaling of functions, but there's tons of other tips uh, which were also discussed um, in the previous Middle of Friday episode when I visited Kent in. Um, Phoenix. So, if you want to learn more about fun uh, logic and functions currently, um, and you want to dive into some of the tips, um, or they could be useful for you, please uh, do so. Okay, so this brings us to the end of our episode. So, I'd like to thank you for, for watching again. Um, also, I'd like to be thank uh, Bistro 360 for uh, being a, a great host, and I'll leave you with the music credits. Mm -hmm.